Hi everybody and welcome to the United Stand. This is your latest Manchester United news. Lots to talk about. A potential headache for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in relation to Bruno Fernandes. A bit about Cavani, Dembele and also an interesting theory on Thomas Partey and whether Manchester United should have made a move for him. But we're going to start off with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Bruno Fernandes. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to ignore that somebody in the live comments did say, where would you go in this, in this debate if it did turn into a big issue between Oli and Bruno? Whose side would you go on? And the, the answer is I'd need to know the facts. I need to know the facts. You know, ultimately I, I would need to know the facts. But oh, look, I mean, I was Oli out in January. We got Bruno Fernandes and I wanted to give Oli the benefit of the doubt. So if he did start scapegoating Bruno or anything like that, then I would seriously question my backing of the manager. You know, I've got to be honest because it was the purchase of Bruno that I think gave him a second chance. So, um, but look, I don't think we're actually at that point. There's two sources here that I want to talk about. One, Ojogo, which are Portuguese, saying that Bruno Fernandes is, is struggling mentally and physically with burnout because he's constantly been used since he came to Manchester United. He basically carried the team to third place. Had very little break after the Europa League semi-final, playing lots of games for Portugal. He's got three games for Portugal in the international break. Um, and obviously is, you know, a massive part of Manchester United's what's going on before the international break and after the break. Then there's the other thing from the Athletic, which we touched on a little bit before, whereby Bruno Fernandes was identified as being very vocal at half-time against Spurs, but tactically Oli decided to take him off. Now, there's even a discussion that that may have been because he was preserving him for Portuguese games, which... No, you don't. You Manchester United manager, you're three one down at half time or four one down at half time. I think we were, and you take off your best player because you want him to be fresh for Portugal. That's not the truth. I, I think it was a tactical decision to take Bruno off, and I think it was a big mistake to take Bruno off. And what you do not want to see is, um, I mean, look. If I'm absolutely honest, I, I I want Ollie to do well, and I love Bruno, but I think Ollie, you know, Ollie taking Bruno off last week to me identified a lack of trust in his most trustworthy player. I think it did. Why 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 would you not tactically taking Bruno Fernandes off, who's the most tenacious player we've got, who's not on a yellow card, who actually can make things happen. And let's not forget, Paul Pogba wasn't good in the first half against Spurs and was even worse in the second half. He was at fault for two goals. So that's the thing for me. And look, I, I was reading in one article that he got took off for Donny van der Beek. He didn't get taken off for Donny van der Beek. He got took off for Fred. Matic and Bruno got took off for Fred and McTominay. Van der Beek came on later. So I don't agree with that from a tactical point of view. And I do think that Bruno Fernandes, if he's being vocal in the dressing room, is then substituted. I think it sends the wrong message. But I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer made massive mistakes against Spurs at half past at half time. Um, and he can rectify those mistakes when we come back from the international break. And realistically, Bruno Fernandes should be playing every single minute of every single game for Manchester United. And that there lies the issue. Because if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer thinks that by dropping Bruno for anybody else, he's going to stay in a job for long, he's not. He needs to value his best player and he needs to stop prioritising people like Harry Maguire and Paul Pogba ahead of Bruno Fernandes, who, to be honest with you, I like Paul Pogba and I like Harry Maguire, but Bruno's been here seven months and in that time he has shown to me that he's more consistent and, and more important to Manchester United than those two players who've been here for, for years, in fact. So Oli needs to be clever about what he's doing with Bruno. But what I do think is an issue and, and I think is a very important point to touch on is that what Ojogo are talking from Portugal about mental and physical burnout, this is something that we've heard before. The Swedish coach was talking about it with Lindelof and I just think that when you've got a situation with Manchester United where you have, um, you know, you've got people coming out talking about burnout and physical material. What I'm trying to say is our players don't need an excuse to be lazy. And I know that sounds really bad because there are players, the Manchester United players, I want them to do well, but they have let us down. They know they've, they know they've let us down. They've put the bloody tweets out anyway. So... They have let us down and they have let us down numerous times in the past. The last thing you want in their head is, I'm tired. Oh, I might be suffering from mental and physical fatigue because then they will start to, to, to suffer from that. So we've got to be very, very careful. But again, you know, for me, this shifts into the board area again, whereby we've basically, and we'll talk about Cavani in a minute, but you tell me, don't you think Fergie would have taken him off, says Matt Carroll? I don't think Sir Alex Ferguson, I think that's a great question, Matt, and I'll come back to that. Um... And, and Adenham says, you, you guys are ridiculous. You wanted a leader and you've got one in Bruno. Exactly. And 
I think that answers the previous point that there's no way in a million years Sir Alex Ferguson would have substituted Bruno Fernandes at half time. No way. No way in a million years he would not have took him off. I couldn't understand. To, I expected somebody to say Bruno's pulled his hamstring or something. I, I couldn't believe he took him off at half time. This is the man that when we lose it late on against Sevilla in the semi-final, he's bollocking Lindelof. This is the man who you know in that dressing room is going to be vocal. This is the man who when he, you know, that Sporting Lisbon click where he's kicking the locker room. I mean, he's exactly what you need. And I think Oli, for whatever reason, and we probably won't know the reason, for whatever reason he substituted him, it was catastrophic. You know, the game was lost, I accept that, but... You need to keep a player like that on the pitch. You really, really do. Hi, Mark. Do you think the Bruno half-time anger story is true? If so, how do you feel about it? I love his passion and we need more of it if you ask me, says Dan Brown. Look, I've said this many times before. I don't care if Paul Pogba, Harry Maguire, Anthony Martial um, and any other player that I like leaves Manchester United and that we get left with 11 Brunos or, you know, you know Eric Bayes. I think Donny van der Beek will have a good attitude as well. Marcus Rashford's. These players... You know, they might be lacking in, 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 in raw ability. I mean, look, Pogba against Bruno, it's a mismatch. Bruno is a better footballer than Bruno Fernandes. But Bruno Fernandes is a better player for Manchester United than Paul Pogba is. And people don't understand that because they get, they get very one tunnel visioned. Pogba is a better talent than Bruno. 100%. I'll argue that with anybody. He's a better footballer. But Bruno is a better footballer for Manchester United than Pogba. Well, how does that work? Well, I'll tell you how it works. Because having the better talent but not actually consistently performing in a Manchester United shirt doesn't make you the better Manchester United player. Bruno Fernandes is Manchester United's best player because over the last few years, he's been our best player. I know he's only been here a few months, but he has performed very consistently in that shirt. And the great thing about Bruno is, even when he has a crap game, and he has had a few, he'll still do something. Like, I thought he was crap against Brighton. He still put the assist in for Rashford, and he scored the pressure cooker penalty. So Bruno is massively important to us. He is a leader, and he needs to be valued, because I was watching Zander's show this morning where he was talking about this story from uh, La Repubblica, this journalist that was saying Lukaku um, spoke about clans at Manchester United and they don't have those in the Inter Milan dressing room. And this is something that's been going on for a very long time. Manchester United have got sections in their dressing room and it's been going on probably since the days of David Moyes, really. And you can sort of, look, it's speculation. I don't need to do it. But, you, you know, mentioned in that story was Pogba and Martial, French. Um, I think that there's probably a Spanish contingent, which is, you know, De Gea, Mata, it used to be Herrera, Damien was part of that as well. Eric Bayes probably in the group with Martial and Pogba, and I would say Donny van der Beek. I mean, I don't know what group Donny van der Beek is. I would say Danny van der Beek maybe, I mean, could be in the Martial and Pogba group. He could be in the Spanish group. But um, And then there's probably an English contingent as well. So the, 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 there is... Um, and Lindelof's rumoured to be in the in the Pogba and Martial group as well. But, I mean, these are all rumours. It doesn't matter. But the point I'm trying to make is that there is fractures in the dressing room. There are little factions in there. You wouldn't have that under Roy Keane. You wouldn't have that under Cantona. You wouldn't have it under Brian Robson. You wouldn't have it under John Terry. And you wouldn't have it under Steven Gerrard because they are, they are the voice in the dressing room and they are the ones that everyone looks up to. And I don't think United have got that. I think we've got little factions in there and I don't think that helps us. So that is something that Oli going to see Solskjaer needs to work on. But look, do I think there's a fallout between Oli and Bruno? No. Do I think that there could be? Yes. I think that what we saw last week against Spurs, if you sub Bruno off, he'll be on international duty. One, very pissed off with the result because he's a winner. He wants to win. And two, because he was, he was sacrificed at half time. And that, you don't sacrifice your best player. And that's what I'm trying to say here is he never should have took Bruno off last week. You don't take off your best player in a situation where your backs are to the wall and you need fighters. Well, Bruno's a fighter and you took him off. So Oli got that wrong. But Oli's got a lot wrong recently. When he comes back from international break, he's got to start getting things right. Oli is not Fergie. He's not in charge of a championship side, champion side and can't afford these ego matches with his best and most hardworking players, says Arjun. I, I agree. And uh, Bruno is our best defender and a tackle. People saying Bruno out need to check their eyes to CV, Kevin. Yeah, I, I've never really understood it. And we spoke about it last night, didn't we? These agendas that we have in, within our fan base. Um, I don't really... Under I've never understood the Bruno, anti-Bruno brigade. I think it's pro-Pogba people who don't like the fact that Bruno's our most important player. But 
you know, for me, I don't have agendas. I, I like Paul Pogba. He's very inconsistent. I like him. If he wants to go to Madrid, he can go. If he signs the new contract and is consistent, he can stay. I don't carry those sort of agendas like where, you know, I just don't like a player. I'll, I'll say I don't like a player if they're not performing, but you know, Bruno for me is a massively important player. And I think Cavani, you know, and again, Zander was talking about this this morning. I think Cavani takes on a very interesting... I mean, look, Cavani's a massive risk. He is a massive risk. But we've done the deal. I wouldn't have done the deal. Um, but we've done the deal. He's a Manchester United player. And I always have said this, that when a player becomes a United player, if we'd bought Josh King, I would have vocally said I didn't want it to happen. But obviously, the Glazers get away with it because I, I and you will say, well, he's wearing a United shirt now. We've got to back him. Cavani... I think he's interesting. You know, I was reading this week a lot about Cavani to sort of understand where he's at with his career. You know, is he on? I think he's on the slowdown. He's had more injuries. What can he do in the Premier League? What's his personality is very important, especially when you talk about that dressing room. And I was interested to read about Cavani didn't get on with Neymar. On a professional sense, they did, but they didn't get on. And that, to me, encouraged me about Cavani because it made me think, well, you know, Neymar's the life and soul of the party. Neymar is... You know, you watch Neymar for Brazil, everything has to go through Neymar. PSG is the star. And it made me think, well, you know, Cavani there is, if he's not, you know, if he's like, yeah, we get on professionally, but we're not good mates. There, there to me is a character that's strong. There to me is a car character that uh, can lead. And there to me is a character that's like, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not just going to bow down to Neymar and be on in the Neymar gang. I'm my own person. And, and, and I think that's, that's good. Cavani is a massive risk at 33 and a half, though. And if he gets injured, he's, he's no influence, is he? But, you know, maybe Cavani coming into that dressing room could be quite interesting, uh, you know, in a similar way to maybe Zlatan. I hope that that can happen. But um, also on Cavani, just, just you know, I've said it a few times, no one else was interested in him. ESPN reckoned that there were two clubs in for uh, Cavani. Real Madrid expressed an interest and Juventus even got as far as offering him eight million a year. So um, this is, you know... That's only good news. Whether it's true, I'm not saying ESPN are gospel, whether it's true or not, but Cavani is at the club now. I'm against the deal. I'm not against the player. I've said this before. I'm very pissed off about the deal. I mean, how you go from Sancho wearing a number seven shirt to Cavani wearing a number seven shirt says a lot about the board at Manchester United. I think Cavani, to explain it from my point of view, I think Cavani, if he'd gone to Liverpool, or he'd gone to Man City, I would have gone, that's a great deal. Because they're established teams, that they're, they're very good teams. Or Juventus, because they're, you know, they're champions. They're, they're teams that are going to be fighting for titles. And I think Cavani going to teams like that, where they can basically afford the risk. They can add a striker and if it works, it makes them better. And if it doesn't work, they've not lost anything. For United, Cavani is a huge risk because it's a lot of money on a player that if it works, yeah, it's great. But if it doesn't work, we're in big trouble. It has to work. And, and that's why this sort of risk signing for me is a concern. But I'm interested to see what Cavani can do. And um, I hope he can do he can do a good job for us. Hi, Mark. It's been raining in the well and my skin is more wrinkled than my granddad's elbow. Please bring moisturizer when you look for me, says Jim Shorts. He's still down the, the well. Please smash a like on the video as well if you're watching. The next thing I want to talk about is Dembele and Sport in Barcelona are talking about this and they're saying that Manchester United could well go back in for Dembele in January. He's still for sale. Barcelona still wants to get rid of him and that Manchester United, with more time to plan it, could get the deal done that they got very close to doing last Monday. Yeah, I mean, look, that's going to excite a lot of you. You know what I think about transfers at the moment. You know that, as far as I'm concerned, unless a player holds a shirt up now, I, I don't really have anything to say about it. Um, I'm still very angry about what happened um, last week, as I'm sure many of us are. But yeah, to me, Dembele is not the, the, not the option. But I suppose in some ways, to those people who would like Dembele, let's see what he does between now and January. That's three months. He's fit. Does he stay fit? Does he perform well? Because if I think if he stays fit and he performs well, Barcelona will want to keep him. And if he stays, if he doesn't stay fit... And he, get, and he doesn't perform well, Barcelona won't want to sell him and should Manchester United be going and doing that if he gets injured again? So, you know, we can see what happens with that one. Bruno became scapegoat in the dressing room. Yeah, like United, morale is broken at the moment, says Rene. We need more players with the work ethic of Bruno at United, a player of his calibre who loves to play for the shirt at United, says Sadiq Rahman. Well, the, you know, the interesting thing about Bruno is, and I have to bring this out, is that... He's a fan service signing. We all wanted him. We were all talking about him way before United signed him. And that doesn't mean United weren't scouting him. They were. But last summer, 
a year ago, they backed out of a deal for Bruno because they thought he was too high risk. Pogba and McTominay got injured in January and they went in for Pogba because they were uh, in for Bruno because they were panicking. Let's not forget that Manchester United walked away from a Bruno deal a year ago. That's how much of a high priority he was. In January, if Pogba had not got injured or McTominay had not got injured and Haaland had signed, we never would have signed Bruno. So there's a massive slice of luck that United ended up with Bruno. It, you know, for us, it's like, yes, get Bruno in. We know he's a great player. This is the player we need at Manchester United. But actually, the truth of the matter is United were very lucky to get the deal done and circumstances certainly made them go and do it. And to them, Bruno was a desperation signing, whereas to us... It was an obvious signing that needed to be made. So, you know, the perception of Bruno from Oli may be different to what it is for us, because for us, he's a signing that we should should have made, that he's one of our best players. But you never know what the perception of Bruno is from Oli and everybody else, because, you know, they were in charge when United did pull out of a deal a year ago. They were in charge when Oli wanted Haaland and ended up getting Bruno because Pogba and McTominay were injured. I mean, is he held in the highest esteem? within the club and the coaching staff as he is with the fans. I mean, we he's proven himself to be our best and most important player, but is he held in that esteem by Oli and that? I mean, look, what I'm trying to say is, could we end up in a situation where Donny van der Beek starts with Pogba and Matic and Bruno's on the bench? To me, that would be catastrophic, as I say, but you never second-guess a manager. You know, I watched Louis van Gaal consistently pick Fellaini and keep Herrera on the bench, and I never understood why. To me, under Herrera, epitomised what a Manchester United midfielder should be, and Fellaini didn't. And that yet van Gaal, who's got a history of playing um, a good standard of, uh, of, of uh, football, I would have thought Herrera would have fitted him like a glove, but he didn't. And, you know, you just never know how a manager may not feel the way we feel. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer doesn't want to lose 10 nil, so he took off Bruno for Scott and Fred. Remember, he was defensive most of the season before Bruno came in, says Ronnie Jacob. And if this Oli Bruno thing is true, it's worrying. De Gea stripped of captaincy after speaking out. Bruno sat after speaking out. Sounds like yes men only, says South Paul of Sports. But then you've got Paul Pogba speaking out every time he goes on international duty and they let him get away with it. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. And maybe Oli thinks Bruno is too emotional to be captain. What do you think, Mark, says Per Eric Klassen? I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer played with one of the most emotional captains in the world and obviously he was the best captain that's ever captained in the Premier League and his name was Roy Keane. He was Mr. Emotion. So, you know, if I was Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I would go for the captain who is the closest thing to Roy Keane because you, you, he played with it. He knows it works. And the closest thing we've got to Roy Keane, and, he, and he's nowhere near Roy Keane, but the closest thing we've got to Roy Keane is Bruno Fernandes. He's got that temper. He's got that frustration. He's got that will to win. And... You know, not many people have that. Not many people have that. I don't think we've had anybody like Bruno at the club for six years. I don't. I think, he, to me, he's the leader on the pitch. You may as well give him the captain's armband. I can see United going in for Sancho in January for 70 million, says Matt Carroll. I'll hope so, but um, I will hold uh, judgment on that one. There is an 8 o'clock show tonight, yes. And um, also, um, link in the video description. I'm going to be playing FIFA 21 career mode. It's episode 5 of my Manchester United career mode. It's going really, really well. So you can check that out. I'm going to be live there straight after this one. I've dropped the link in the video description for that if you want a bit of FIFA on a Saturday afternoon because we ain't got any bloody football. Although next week, Manchester United are playing at 3 o'clock next week and in the UK, they're expecting us to pay 15 quid to watch it. doesn't matter that you already pay for Sky and BT. You've now got to pay for view for games like this on a 3 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. 15 quid. Like Jamie, our writer, said, I'm going to pay, can I pay £3 in the first half, £3 in the second half, and then I'll, re I'll pay the remaining £9 if I'm satisfied with the result. May as well do it in instalments. That's what United try and do. Um, and the, the thing, other thing I wanted to talk about was Thomas Partey. Now, Paul Merson um, is a pundit for Sky, and he talks crap, to be honest, most of the time, like most, like most pundits do, like some of you would say I do. But um, he did come out and, and make a very interesting point about Thomas Partey. And I, th I just think in, in the context of what happened to us in the transfer window, which was massively disappointing... I think we sort of ignored the Thomas Partey thing because, you know, we were just feeling so raw and sad ourselves. But I'm not, I just want to say, I think Thomas Partey to Arsenal is probably one of the signings of the summer. I don't like Arsenal and I don't like Ar I don't want Arsenal to do well, but he is a fantastic signing for them. And I think that um, I think he's going to be uh, a really interesting signing for them. And they got him for 46 million, which is what his release clause always was. And we've seen two players go this summer 
for really good value for money. Werner to Chelsea for 50 million and now Partey to Arsenal for 46 million quid. I just think, well, Paul Merson said, I don't understand why Manchester United and Manchester City didn't go for him because he's better than every centre defensive midfielder they've got. And I've got to say, he doesn't actually get a lot right. But, you know, every, you know, twice a day a clock tells the right time, doesn't it? And Paul Merson's got, got it right on here. I mean, I, th I just wanted to bring it up because I'm sure many of you would agree that I, I think that Thomas Partey to Manchester United would have been a very, very good signing. Um, you know, I don't personally think Fred and McTominay are that good. And Matic is is is, is aging, isn't he? So and not and some people would say, well, we've got Garner coming through, but that that's in a long time. That might not even be ready next season. So yeah, we 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 never looked at that sort of midfield spot. And look, to call Thomas Partey a CDM is unfair. He's more box to box. He can play CDM. But yeah, I think it, again, that's another player that maybe we should have been looking at that, that I think we could have got and we didn't go for. And I think yet again we're in this situation where. We've given McTominay a really long contract, just like we've given Brandon Williams a really long contract. And are they actually going to be Manchester United players? Are they good enough to even be on the Man United bench? But we've given them big contracts. Fred is obviously at the club as well, and Matic. And I think the reason we didn't go for Thomas Partey is because we've got those three players. But again, this is where a good sporting director comes into play. Should we... Because what a sporting director would do if he got the job, he'd look at the squad and say, you know what? Him, 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 him. I'm not being sexist. They will be him. It's men's football. They're not good enough. We need to move them out and bring better players in. And I think when I look at the centre defensive midfield position, and you've got Matic, Fred and McTominay, a good sporting director would say, well, none of them are going to win you the title because Matic, you're not winning the title this year. Next year, Matic is going to be getting even older. He can't win you a title anymore because by the time you're ready, he'll be too old. And McTominay and Fred... Well, one of them, let's see what happens. But, you know, you're not going to get lucky and both of them be good enough. So you do need a player to come in there. And, and yeah, I, you know, I think Man United are now, as we've seen with the Sancho situation and as we've seen with the centre-back situation, and now justifying why we didn't go for Partey as well. Man United aren't going... Man, Man, Manchester United are now not signing players, not only because we've got an incompetent board, but also because we're stuck with a lot of players that aren't good enough in positions that we need to strengthen. And the centre-back is another prime example of the centre-defensive midfield, isn't it? Where you've got Phil Jones, Marcus Rojo, both earning £80,000 a week, both surplus to requirements, but both preventing us buying a centre-back because we've got Maguire, Lindelof, Twansebi, who, you know, let's work with those. Uh, we've got Bay as well. So we've got four centre-backs. If Oli wants a fifth one, well, he's already got Rojo and Jones as well. And I think this is the problem. We're stuck with... We're stuck with players that are stopping us by another players. Hi, Mark. Let's not forget Spurs could have easily ended up with Bruno and Poch could have still have been at Spurs. We should think ourselves lucky. We ended up getting him. He is our leader. United's game next week is at 8pm. This is Jordan Such. Okay, it's on at 8 o'clock tomorrow next Saturday. And Chris, thanks for that, Jordan. And Chris says, I'll take a player who hates losing like Bruno before those that accept it like Jones, Smalling, Pogba, etc. They think losing is just part of the game, says Chris. And, you know, you know, my final word on Bruno is this. And welcome to the Members Club, Hakan Kilnic. Thanks everyone who does join the Members Club, by the way. You can click it by clicking the Join button. You get a little badge next to your name like Sadik Rahman's got there saying Jones and Rojo needed to be sold already. Uh, you get a little badge next to your name uh, like VK in Bangkok. He says Fred's, Fred, Scott, Bruno, Best and Combo. Van der Beek can play right attacker. And Pranav as well says, I heard Woodward is behind Haaland move in January. Is that another joke of 2021? Yeah, we're not going to get him. Uh, thanks for joining the Members Club. You can do that by clicking the Join button. Dyer says, Mark, someone big needs to happen or nothing will change. How did we not jump at the chance to sign Haaland? Like, the incompetence is incredible. Says Dyer. Well, apparently, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was furious that we didn't do the Haaland deal. And Maguire needs to be benched if this happens. 100% think we'd play better, says Jimmy Marseille. Yeah, I mean, look, my final word on Bruno is that, and, you know, a couple of you have touched, touched on it. In fact, quite a few of you have touched on it in the live comments. It's not just ability, it's a mentality thing. You know, I want Manchester United players to wear the shirt who care. And look, I do like Eric Bay. I just think, I don't know whether he's good enough to play for United, but he has got the right attitude. He does put his body on the line for the club. But Bruno puts his body on the line for the club, cares about losing, cares about winning. You know, he doesn't want to lose. He does want to win and really is passionate. And you can see that every minute of every game he's playing. I want 11 of those characters in the team. And I, you know, for the life of me, I cannot understand why you would sub that and leave 
you know, look, I don't want to pick on Pogba. Let's let's pick on Maguire, Pogba, you know, and, and any other player that played last Saturday who they're almost smiling in resignation. Oh, this everything's going against us. Oh, I can't believe it. Now it now it's five, and you think. That's that's. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that wry smile of disappointment. I want to see an aggression. You know, I I I actually think in that second half, if Roy Keane had been on the pitch and we'd have been, you know, four five one down to Spurs, he would have made sure he got a yellow card. He would have clattered somebody out of pure frustration. I didn't see any of that happening last week. And uh, you know, I I don't. I think United players need need almost to go and watch Premier League years from the late nineties, um, because they don't get what Manchester United's all about. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer does. I remember Ole Gunnar Solskjaer running back in that game. You know, someone's through, running through one-on-one. -on -one, he trips him up. He takes the red card. He puts his hands in the air because he knows. I can't, you know, there's an there's an element of bad sportsmanship in winning. There is. And nobody wants you to ever hear this, but there is. That trip, that foul, that aggression. It's the ability to win and wanting to win. And, you know, Bruno's got it. Bruno has got it. I think a good Matic replacement would be Basuma from Brighton. That's the sort of player we need. Won't be expensive either, says Sean. I think he's fantastic. He didn't. He, you know what? If he'd played against us a couple of weeks ago, we should have lost that game to Brighton anyway, but he'd been sent off the week before. I think they would have beat us because Pogba was dreadful in that game. And I think that if that lad had played for Wigan, they would have dominated that midfield more than they did. But uh, yeah, he's a good, he is a good player and I think he's the right sort of profile as well. Anyway, please smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I am back at eight o'clock. Get your comments in there. And uh, if you want to join me in literally three minutes time, I'm going to be live on Mark Goldbridge, That's Football, playing a bit of FIFA 21 on my Manchester United career mode. I've dropped the link in the video description. I'll see you over there in a minute. Mate, we've never op operated with a director of football. I get that it's a talking point, but we need to be real about the management style says Vader is dead. But I don't I don't really get that comment. Thanks for the super chat, but I don't get your point, man, your, your comment. We've never operated with a director of football, but director of footballs are quite a uh, recent phenomenon and everybody else has got them. We do need one. I think trying to chuck everything on management is really naive in the modern game because managers need support. Managers need people above them who know football, who can run things like player recruitment, new contracts, removal of players. That is not the manager's job. And and it's not the job that Ollie does. Ed Woodward does that. So we do need a director of football. It's, it's not something you can brush under the carpet and say we don't need it. Anyway, link in the video description. I'll see you over in a couple of minutes on uh, Mark Goldberg's That's Football for FIFA 21. Jumper-wise, we've got our own merch. It's underneath the video. You can get T-shirts, jumpers. You can, get, you can start getting your Christmas jumper early if you want and get it ready, your 12 cantonars. But uh, check that out. I'll see you, see you over on That's Football. Um, links in the video description. I'll see you in a couple of minutes.